given a sorted array of distinct integers, write a function index equals value search that returns the lowest index i for which array i equals i, return minus one if there's no such index, analyze time and space complexities. Okay. Returns the lowest So in this first example, we output two because two is at index two. This one, there is no index. And all the numbers are distinct, so that makes it easier. Okay. I think I've seen this problem a long time ago, but I forget how I solved it. Mm -hmm. So, so let's see. So, since it's sorted, that kind of, I'm thinking that we're going to use some kind of binary search there to do it. Um, Because otherwise, I mean, the easy, like the brute force way would just be to iterate through from the left to the right and then just check mm -hmm. if the index matches the number of the element. Um, so that's one way we could do it. And then we could just either stop at the first one that we get as a match or we can exit early. Um, that would give us a time complexity of n. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way we could do it. But I wonder if there are any constraints. No. Um, so there's no constraints, and you do have a valid brute force approach. But I would, um, I would spend a little bit more time in thinking how you can make the time complexity less than O of n. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I mentioned, doing like a, maybe like a modified binary search would give us a log n time complexity. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how we could use that. So, so the length is equal to four in this case. So yeah, four divided by two is equal to two. So our initially we would be here. So maybe this isn't the best example because the first one is a match. Um, but say we have like a one there actually. Um, so we had one. Yeah, say we had something like that. And then this is like a three. Then we would get to this index with three. And then I think, so we have to check the value in here and see if we're like, Greater so if if it's equal then obviously we're done we can just return that I think unless we have like a weird case where it's like zero one two three four and then everything is a match so that's something that we have to account for because initially we would match like we would get so a match I, I'd like to highlight this part where it says. Um, it will return the lowest index for which it matches. Yeah, exactly. So if we do it like this, like this would be a match, but this isn't the correct answer because we need to re we would re need to return this zero here. So I think, so we need to keep track of maybe if we already have a match, like our current lowest match. So let's see. So I think this approach that I had would work, but we need to modify it. So if we do find a match, we need to like keep checking to see if there's a lower match. Um, so at this point, so say we get to two here and then we see that we are at this three. Since, we're, since our, our element value is higher than our index, then we have to go and search the left side 
of the array. Um, and then if it's greater than, then we probably have to check the right side. So let's see, so at this point, uh, our index would be two and it would be three. So now we'd have to check the left side. So negative eight and one. So our new length would be two and then two divided by two equals one and then we get to the one and then we'd see that we do have a match. So that works for that case. Um, let's see, let's try and find one where we have to go to the right. So let's say this is zero, one, two, or say this is like negative four, one, and this is three. So right now our length is four, four divided by two is two. So we get zero, one, two. So we'd see that our element is less than two. So we'd have to, if it's less than, then we have to check the right side. And then we would just have three, our length would be one, one divided by two, or I guess it would be two. So we'd have to do a binary search on the three. So I, I think I have a general idea of how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think first we should do the this one where we don't have, like this is kind of a special case up here. So I think once we have the general algorithm, then we can modify it um, to get the lowest index. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So probably need some kind of helper to do this. And so we'll do static. So we have array. So we'll have current index. Or actually, I think we just need our start and our end. So these will be like our logical start and end of the array, um, which initially would be zero and ray dot length minus one. And this will have to be modified somehow, but I'll worry about that later. So let's see. So in a binary search, you want to get, well, let's see here. So in a binary search, you go while our start is less than or equal to our end. We get our mid value starts plus end. So this is our mid. So now we'll say if so we'll have our three cases here. Um, so if our array mid equals mid. Um, so so if, if we didn't, if we just wanted to find the first value that was a match, then we would be done at this point. Um, but we have to keep checking. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have like a a variable here and I guess like answer and then we'll set it to negative one initially and this is what we're returning uh, so if it never gets set it'll just return minus one and then at this point um, we'll set 
let's see. So we want to set answer equal to mid. And then we want to set our, our end equal to mid minus one. And I'm pretty sure, let's see. So I should handle that case. Um, So the other cases are whether we need to go to the left or the right. So let's see, down here we said that if, if array mid is less than mid, so so let's see. So let me go back to my example here. Um, so our length was four and we needed to check value two. So we're at zero, one, two. So if array mid is less than mid, then we need to go to the right. So start equals mid plus one. And then this one here would just be end equals mid minus one. Let me just think here for a sec. Mm -hmm. So this will be search turn. So while start is less than or equal to end, so we get our mid value. We check if our mid is a match, then we update our answer and then we go to the left. Otherwise, here we go to the right, here we go to the left. Okay, I'm gonna try and run this. Okay. And you haven't actually called anything in oh, the I main didn't print page. It out. Oh, we have a main right here. Okay, let me. Um, so I guess we have to te make our own test cases. Mm -hmm. Or could I just run tests and steal one of their own, one of theirs? I mean, you can if you want to. You can also use the one that's actually used in the examples. Okay. Oh yeah. I just, well, I already ran it, but oh. I'll just pass it in here. Do int. So this should return two. You can try running it again. It doesn't doesn't like my print. Oh, because I have these brackets here. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Do I have an infinite loop somewhere? Let's see. Uh, let me debug here. So let me do a print statement. How are we on time? We got, okay, we're pretty good. Um, so let's just print out mid. I mean, it looks 
That looks right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's just sometimes it's buggy with running code. Oh, it's the edit, it's the compiler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let me try running it again. Actually, this probably isn't the best case because it just works immediately. Oh, actually. Well, that's the right answer. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I, it should actually be that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let me run the tests. Cool. All right, passed everything. Cool. <laughs> nice. Um, would you like to actually let me see which tests they have? Would you like to do the sequential test of zero, one, two, three? Um, yeah. Let's try that. So the answer should be zero. Cool. Nice. What's your runtime complexity? Um, runtime should still be um, log of n. Mm -hmm. yeah. Space complexity? Space complexity. Um, since we're doing this iteratively, it should just be constant space. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, you too. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right. Bye.